Welcome to the 217 Recovery Podcast. Ooh, people are excited up in the easy. And Rob, I don't know if you can hear him in the background. He's here tonight. It's Women's Night. Woo woo! It's Women's Night, so I'm bring him. filling in for the for the uh, other woman that was not able Brianna. to make it. So yeah, she'll be back, or she'll be in next week. If my voice starts to crack, or you hear me talking in a feminine kind of way, don't be surprised. It's not... Uh, That's just not making any... me not feel left out. Yeah. And then there's Anna. Anna. Hi. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. And um, we're going to talk about women's stuff, and I know Rob is so excited about it, and I'm just, I'm just going to let you guys go tonight. So Appreciate that. You know, Thank en- you for that en- lovely introduction. Enjoy the women talk, and if you want any women to be on with you, I mean, it's, it's kind of like people are probably thinking, people don't, women don't like Anna. Because yeah. it's just Anna and then the boys. Hmm. You know, I had a failed attempt tonight. We were going to have someone else with us. But, you know, next week will be another story. And I look forward to that. So You promise? I, I promise. Really? Pinky promise. Well, okay, because I don't know. you. I, I might not be here, but <laughs> it's a long story. I don't want to get into it right now, especially not in this. But it doesn't matter. So uh, what about your friend that uh, wasn't able to make it tonight? Didn't they promise? Uh, we we didn't do a pinky promise, so maybe that's where I failed. So I'm gonna. I don't think you failed. I think she failed. Yeah. Well, she's regardless. She's not here, and we're grateful to have her up. So. Oh uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. As far as the women talk goes, I guess I will kind of just leave it over to you. I don't want to uh, cross any any uh, gender boundaries here. But, oh, sorry. <coughs> oh, whoops. I want to call out any gender boundaries here, so I guess I'll let you start off with what you want to talk about. All right. Well, cross those boundaries all you want because it is June, and yeah. June just happens to be happens to be Pride Month. Pride Month? Which, which Pride Month? Gay Pride. Oh, okay. I'm not 100% into all the labels, but I believe the correct vernacular is LGBT. Q? Q. What does the Q? I think the Q stands for queer. Really? Because, see, I was under the same assumption because I'm like, how many words start with Q? Not really a lot. There's Queen. There's which, Quentin Tarantino. There's Quentin Tarantino. There's Queen, which... Could, Wilt. Well, okay, great. We don't need to start na- naming... Quintuplets. Every, okay. Quintessential. Queen. <laughs> Oh, there's Corey. All right. So I was thinking that maybe tonight we could talk about temptations. Temptations? Okay, no. that sounds good. Temptations. Yeah. All right. Where do you want to go with that? I was thinking that, because this is a recovery-based podcast, essentially, that mm-hmm. there is a multitude of temptations. And a lot of people view it as that men have all these temptations, but... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've noticed that it seems to be in treatment that women are the dominant predators. You know, that is uh, very... (sighs) Your timing is impeccable as far as bringing this up because I happen to be going through some of my own things right now um, and not really sure what to do or how to go about things because what you said as far as boundaries, go ahead and break boundaries because this month is Gay Pride Month. Well, there's certain boundaries that, you know, I don't think should be broken due to, okay, I'm going to try to stay on your topic as far as, you know, what you're talking about, but not to, not to get too far off, off of it. Um, I feel that I'm trying to, I'm not trying to understand women. Okay. I've gone wrong with that several times in the past. You and me both, Rob. (laughs) Well, I mean, at at least you, uh, I guess can empathize or sympathize or something a little bit better than I could as far as understanding how, how, uh, you know, a lot of women think, but, uh, you know, there's that home field advantage. Yes. There. Yeah. Okay. So you would, okay. agree with that. Um, I don't think anybody will ever understand the mind of a woman though, especially the intricacy and how different each individual is. 
each individual woman. Mm -hmm. But yes, and I agree. Absolutely. Of course, what am I saying? No, I disagree. I'm disagreeing with the woman. No. Uh, I'm wrong right there for doing that. So, <laughs> But really, uh, okay, going... I, I guess we can get deeper into where I was going to go with... Yeah, feel as, free. As far as... No, as I wanted to get back into what you were talking about. Uh, you know, as far as women in, in rehabs, you know, kind of having the upper hand. Um, What's my view on it? Yeah. So this is my view. Um, I've been to several inpatient rehab treatment centers as a client, as a visitor, and as an employee now. And I have witnessed, um, I've been subjected to the other end of that, and it seems to me that women, especially those that have not been sober ever for the first time or clean, whatever you'd like to use, regardless, um, free of substances, clouding their judgment, um, it seems that their sex drive comes back with a vengeance. And on top of that, they're in an environment where they're sharing things that they've never shared for the first time. And there's men, there's women, and they uh, get what I call, um, you know, we used to get beer glasses. Now you get I don't know. Boob glasses. Something. You you you, you are in, you're you're in a concentrated environment with people going through these emotions, some for the first time, and you have someone that is starting to look better, starting to sound better, and they listen to you. You're right. They're listening to you because that's what they're supposed to do. There's nothing better to do. And yes, you may form a bond. And again, this is a concentrated environment, so it's kind of like watching a um, time progressed plant grow. And um, you you instantly form this bond, and um, hormones are just raging. It's like I feel like sometimes for for individuals, it's worse than going through puberty, and they just want to sink their claws into this person or people or whatever it is that they're after. And um, yeah, I feel that women, uh, like yeah. most things, uh, when they go after something, uh, they go for blood. Right. And I'm trying to word this properly because I know there's certain people that may or may not be listening, and I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot, but um, <clears throat> do you think, because we know from our experiences that most rehab relationships don't work. That's correct. Okay. Now... I've been told by several different people that myself and another person are a complete exception. Exception, thank you. And there are those. I know someone that married their person they met in treatment. Mm -hmm. I also know people that unfortunately have lost that person because heartbreak happens and they don't they didn't use the coping skills cuz it was too fresh. So it could go either way. I feel like if you're with a healthy person and you respect boundaries, like you were saying earlier, right? then anything can happen. And you know what? That brings some optimism to me. Uh, because with what I'm dealing with, I'm not trying to cross boundaries because I know that can push some women away even more. Like if you want, if they're like, okay, I like you. I like you, I love you, or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. and I know that I want something with you. However, maybe right now isn't the proper time to go about this. I need to work on me. If you try to approach, or if you try to go after that even further, that can create even more turmoil. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like showing that respect, respect also is only further working on yourself, but it shows that person how much you value them as a person and also as a potential future partner. You put in any, anybody, for me anyways, if someone shows me that respect and that they're willing to be patient, because I'm a very impatient person, and I'm dealing with patience right now, and... Um, 
I feel like that's sometimes the best form of love and care that you can show. Is just giving them their space. Absolutely. If they need it. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, and it's a hard it's a hard pill to swallow nonetheless. But I think and coming from a female, you know, that that really hits home, you know, because me being from a military background, I if I see a a problem or somebody struggling, I immediately want to fix it, right? And I, and a lot of guys are the same way. It doesn't matter if you have a military background or not. Guys want to fix things, okay? Women don't necessarily think I'm the same, I'll just say, terms or conditions, you know? I understand what you're saying. Um, I, however, am one of those women, though. If I see something, I want to, if I, you know, an injured an injured child, a cat, whatever, a person, I want to pick them up, I want to love them, I want to fix them. And that's not worked in the past. I used to refer to that as, um, you know, the book of mice and men? Yeah. Yep. I used to Lenny situations and pet that kitten until I broke its neck. And unfortunately, it's caused a lot of heartache. And however, you can either look at something as a lesson um, or... What do they say? Lesson, a blessing, or a burden, something like that. But usually, it, no matter what kind of pain things cost, cause you, because I learned from pain. Unfortunately, that's the best form of that things stick with me. Yeah. But um, I try to figure out the lesson out of everything, and it's helped me a lot, a lot. And that cliche acceptance, I used to hate it, but. It's honestly, if I didn't live my life with acceptance, I would probably be drinking. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a good point as far as acceptance goes, because there's a lot of uh, things going on that in my past, uh, with uh, other relationships, um, I kind of... I guess maybe push too far because again I saw a problem and I just wanted to fix it rather than letting it fix itself and I think that when it comes to uh, you know women and get uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I <laughs> I notice more patience in women I think uh, more so than men uh, in a lot of different realms. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I would uh, agree. In a generalized statement, I would definitely agree. I feel that women, and again, this could bring up a whole other topic, which would be a good subject sometime, but that whole gender identity role. We are looked at as nurturers and taught that as a child, a boy is given a truck, a girl is given a doll. And we're asked to babysit at 11 or 14 where boys are just expected to be boys or go mow the lawn. And um, then there's also people that just have it naturally in them, whether they're male or female. But um, I think that, that that plays a big role in today, why women. And, we, I mean, we also mature at different rates. We go through puberty at different ages. And uh, I feel like it all coincides in the bigger picture and yes women do have more patience we also have less testosterone coursing through our blood you know yeah so yeah well so and i mean i guess just kind of uh recapping on on what we had talked about you know i i i just i don't know i guess if it, it, it comes down to the old saying you know, if you really love someone, then let it be free. And if it comes back to you, it was meant to be. And that is basically comes down to acceptance, which is a, another hard pill to swallow. Because with me, uh, I've had a lot of things get in the way. And it, one of the things I'm realizing has been my own will uh, 
run riot. And I don't want to keep making that same mistake, and I don't want to screw something up that I consider very dear. So, um, you know, I guess that's, it's just like, okay, I mean, why are men and women so, so different in so many ways? I mean, I guess it, you know, that's the question that's, you know, stood the test of time, you know, um, whether we're from Venus or Mars, we are physio- physiologically very different, but also emotionally we're wired very different, um. And I don't know why. It's just it's just the way it is. Acceptance again, right? Yeah. No, I I mean we could question it till till the end of time. Well, I would like to think that being so different, uh, it kind of brings out either the best or the worst in us, as far as trying to, because you know they say that love is about. Um, balance. It, yeah, it, you know, it's about having things balanced, but it's it's also about you know compromising, you know, when you don't even want to, or or sacrifice, you know, and not necessarily having to be right or having to be wrong, or it's just coming to a middle ground. And I think that that shows character in both sides if you're able to work through that. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I couldn't agree more with that statement, no. And you know what? For those, it doesn't matter if you are gay, straight, whatever. But it's not happy wife, happy life. It's happy spouse, happy house. So Happy spouse, happy house. That's the quote that I was trying to remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a beautiful thing in my book. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I would like to have one day. Well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't or couldn't, so... Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, um, right on. Well, as far as the boundaries thing, um, I don't know. Did we? Did you want to go any further with? What do you What do you think, Mister Quiet Guy over there? Well, I mean, because I know you have something on your mind, and you're just itching to say something because you're like rolling your eyes oh, and you're like looking I'm, up at the. I'm testing my patience. <laughs> um, it's actually oh. not really men or women. I mean, the average length that we wait in anger is both two and a half minutes, men and women. So neither one are really patient. It's just it, it comes to what situation is being presented, and it comes down to we're all human. We all have souls. So I mean, everybody reacts differently, no matter men or women. So that's the whole patience thing. But... I want to know, though, about if you guys had to get rid of one thing, would it be tacos? Would it be donuts, ice cream, or sushi? Sushi. Sushi, sushi for all of us. Sushi. Okay. Sushi yeah. sucks. Yeah. So that's what we agreed on. Oh, I love sushi, but nothing no, it sucks messes with my tacos and ice cream. I'm just saying. you know. And see, this was a test, and you guys didn't even realize it, but you passed because we all came together as a team. Wow. A 217 team. Wow. With Stephen King in there writing a book, bro, in room yeah. 217. Yeah. Did we yeah. did you, did you I listened to that podcast and oh. I was I was imp- Freaked out First of all, I was impressed by the the fun fact knowledge, but yeah, yeah. that's in, that's incredible. Yeah. Rob brings it, you know. It's a legacy. Yeah. It's like I brought that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sushi sucks. You're welcome. <laughs> Which reminds me, I have a gentleman that would like to join us sometime and uh, he is a past two seventeener. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, then have them donate to the fund so we can get a new computer. <laughs> we'll work on that. Okay, great. No, and we haven't talked really donations in a long time, really. Uh, well, but we would like a new computer. And we, you know what? Thanks to Allison. Thanks to, I don't know, I'm not sure these people still listen. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, Greg. Because yeah. um, I was thinking the other day, all the people I left out, Beth, Becky, they're all women. That's kind of weird. Oh, Greg, <laughs> Greg, you're not a woman. <laughs> my aunt Angie, mom, of course, you got to throw her in every single bug. Yeah. Um, that's not a bad thing, mom. We appreciate it. Threw in the gas money that got us to and from. Or no, it bought us Burger King. But anyway, mom, it helped. It didn't buy us Burger King, no. That gift card did that, and so did Rob. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, a new laptop would be nice. Another microphone, if we could have three. You know, I think <laughs> one of my USB ports doesn't even work on this old 1922 yeah, computer. Like, you turn it on, it's like... 
This thing is like a relic, dude. It's uh, where's this mic yeah. at? Where the other mic? Yeah. I mean, Amazon. Oh, the one that you want to purchase? Yeah, okay. you know, and yeah. that's affordable. But I mean, one of the ports, USB ports. I think one of them doesn't work or something. I don't remember. But yeah, yeah it would be nice. I was looking at them today. My birthday's coming up next week, so I think I'm gonna throw that out there and ask for a little help if you can donate hundred and fifty thousand dollars that'd be cool but if you got five bucks hey man you know we'll definitely put it towards a new laptop and um really into this 217 thing and i'm having a lot of fun with it so i am as well there's going to be a time when we're not going to have to ask for donations but people can still give you know we're going to give that right back whether it you know goes to resources because i was talking with tori today and there's nothing wrong with churches getting the SUD liquor tax money. Nothing wrong with that. But it, it's weird because some of the churches, I don't believe anyway, are running sober living houses or, or running things. They're just kind of given, hey, you want you need to go to rehab or you need some treatment here, some money. Okay, that that's great and that's cool. But what I want to do with 217 Recovery is I want to go around. I want to drive and go talk to schools. I want to go talk to people in the hospital. I want to talk to people in jail. I just want to talk to anybody who will listen. And I think us being out there on the street, and that's the beauty of a podcast, we can take it with us anywhere. And that's what I want to do. And I, I want to be active in saying, hey, look, we're in recovery, and we're, we're cool as hell. You know, spreading that kind of message. And we're having fun. And life is good. And we're life drinking energy good. drinks. And we're on the road. The beautiful thing also about being in recovery is uh, we don't scare people when we approach them anymore. We... Oh. Are well, oh. yeah, yeah. I mean, you did try to molest that little thing out there. Oh, the, uh, oh right in front of the library. She jumps on it. Yeah, the pig. Like, what are you? I was gonna hop on the back. In, mm. <laughs> there recess that never you? happened. Uh, perception <laughs> is. Yeah, well, everybody knows that. Of course, distorted. perception uh, uh, is distorted, especially at time. I you know we've gotten into this millions of times. So, uh, oh, oh, you want you want a fun fact? <laughs> I learned something today. Did you know? And I, I'll bet you ten bucks that you do not know this. I don't have ten dollars, but let's do it. Okay. Both of us, or well, I know you know it. Oh, okay. Bed oh. bugs live forever. <laughs> did you Did you know that? What do you mean? What I mean is what I just said. They don't die. Robert Larson told me that bed bugs live forever. Wait, Everybody man, knows you that. You just said, no, don't throw me. So wait a minute. What well, yeah, you're telling me? We passed. Is... We were driving to a meeting this morning. We passed these like eight mattresses that have been sitting there for like a week, rain on them and everything. I'm They're like, tough well, to kill. I hear. At least there's bed bugs. And are I'm gone. sure that's what he. And meant. I was like, how are they gone? I'm like, well, how are they going to eat? There's no human. He's like, they eat on humans. I'm like, but there's yeah, no. They, they've been out on the road for five days. But there's all the kinds of flesh. And They'll live said, off that shit forever. He said, "Don't you know? Thank you. That bed bugs live forever." I what see okay explain yourself Robert okay I will explain myself it was a broad generalization when I said forever oh, it didn't sound like it well because with Corey you have to talk to him like a <laughs> four year old sometimes because he doesn't he he kind of uh, has his own perception about things and in whoa wow that's for the other people oh thank that, you Janice hold my calls. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed this last week. That's for the other people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't apply to us. We're special. But so when I was going with that, it sometimes, and I forget who I'm talking to when I'm talking with Corey, and I, I need to be more specific. When I say forever, I meant that they're very hard to kill, and that's why they're so hard to get rid of. Oh. Yes. Well, hell, man. Oh. That changes everything because I was under the impression that they lived forever. Really? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 40, but it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> when you never, say that to somebody, you know. And and you being 40 can't make your own assumption like, oh, I understand what he means. What he means is they're hard to kill because I understand from personal No, because I believe that, it was after my counterdicting. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Counterdicting. So I had to, like, throw it back at you. Yeah. What do you think, Annie? You think uh, Corey's way out on the left field here? So I personally know that nothing lives forever. Oh, um, there's two things certain in life, and that's birth and death. But um, we also know Corey. Right. So he's going to take what you say and run with it. Yeah. And that's just that's just one of the be beautiful things that I love <laughs> about this guy, most days anyways. But I don't live with him, so. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You hit the Did you guys see what I did to Ryan? Oh. Well, we welcome Ryan in today to the 217 oh, crew because he really wants to be in it, and I made him do some ridiculous things. I don't know, things. Ryan. Oh, um, you did without me even being around? You are busy, bro. Oh, man. 
man, I could have gotten in on that, and we could have really had some oh, fun, dude. Rob got paged again, by the way. This time it was at Meyer. Yeah, and I was already there. Yeah, Rob from 217 Recovery. <laughs> you didn't hear about that other one, did you, Anna? No, I didn't. Well, Walmart. I was, uh, yeah, I was in Walmart, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm in the produce or whatever, and I hear over the the loudspeaker, the loudspeaker, uh, yes, uh, Rob217, could you please report to the customer service desk? Yeah, and uh, Corey, I, that's why I've yet to go to Walmart with Corey. Yeah, well, <laughs> somebody that we know that was in... It was Mike. Yeah, Mike... Name dropping. Yeah, uh, was there. No last names, I guess. But Mike was there and heard it, and it was like, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... So, yeah, so today I got hit him with the, the Meyer. Uh, but, no, he posted earlier on the Facebook, uh, not the Facebook group, but the Facebook family, 217. Who did? Ryan. Oh, okay. He kind of did similar thing to what you did about the whole wellness event. Oh, so, uh, okay. He was like, he took a picture of it and posted it like, hey, and I was like, oh, that looks like yeah, the same thing that's posted that. on our website under the events. Yeah. So if you go to 217 recovery slash wellness, you'll see the event we're talking about since June 22nd. And it looks like, and Tori says, it's for men too. But there's yoga, there's meditation, there's all kinds of stuff. And first when I saw I'm like, oh, that's for women, but it's for men and women. So There's broga. It's yeah. perfectly acceptable. And if you want events, 217recovery.com slash events. Yeah. You know, podcast slash podcast slash crew. C-R-E-W. Rolling four deep. I got to get Ryan back up there though. But, yeah, uh, we're going to have fun with Ryan, though. This Sunday we're going to be at Recovery Notes. So it'll be a lot of fun. And we're going to be doing a live broadcast from there starting at 5. So as you get ready for Recovery Notes, which is in a new place, the location, 217recovery.com. You can go there and go to the events and see the new location where it's going to be. It's 451 East Mitchell Street in Petoskey. And also, if you didn't know about it, they usually have open slots if you have a hidden talent and you want to come share it. They do. Tori said, we're actually looking for people. And he said he was going to send out a thing that we could help him with that. And cool. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna do something, right, Rob? Yeah, we are. We're going to do women talk. <laughs> well, I'm from, sorry. What? what? <laughs> from recovery notes. <laughs> Rob and Corey's women talk. <laughs> we're going to go into like a Travis P. <laughs> saying. <laughs> like, like oh, yeah. it, it'll be beep, 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 yeah. beep, 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 the whole thing. <laughs> he was Can we do that live guy. with video feed and I get to dress mm-hmm. you too? No. Okay. But you and Ryan, that's Man. a great idea. Okay. <laughs> we'll have them play out whatever we're saying. <laughs> That's, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. This will be fun. Yeah. Whip something up real quick tonight. Write us a script and we'll be good. Uh, we'll be good. You know, we'll be like, hey, if you need to slide us in. Whip something up with something <laughs> out. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just slide us in. I'll bring the butter. <laughs> it's an inside joke for Randy, but he's not even listening. So, oh. yeah, well, apparently we got to get out of here. And then you got to show me whatever you're. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Well, sounds good. And I hope whoever's listening enjoys tonight's podcast you know and uh you know i think uh, what what we covered when we went over i think it was good uh, yeah i had a great conversation with you rob yeah i, I had a good conversation with you too it, uh-huh. it brought brought some mm-hmm. things into perspective good uh you know and this is what we're trying to do so that's right yeah and we definitely bonded and we all agreed sushi sucks and bed bugs do not live forever. So there you go. And tacos will mm-hmm. always be the cat's pajamas. And you and Ryan love to share that wellness, community wellness event. We That's do. On June 22nd, 217recovery.com slash wellness. And then you can share it and be a part of the crew too. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Have a good night. And we'll be back Thursday. Holla. Peace. Later.